All right, well, my, my task this morning uh, is to help you to see that there are lots of places that you can go to to get good information, to educate yourself, so that you can be well informed to make good decisions about your operation. And so I'm going to review a lot of different places that you can go and things that you can avail yourselves of so that you can be up at the top of your game in terms of your knowledge. And so we'll go through several different things I'll talk about and uh, hopefully there will be some new ones in there that you'll make a note of. And um, if there are any areas where you feel like you need to bone up on your knowledge or experience, there may be some there that can be helpful for you in the coming year. So I, I begin with this uh, picture of Abraham Lincoln, and I, I'm trying to give you some advice as you think about where you get your information. So it says here, uh, don't believe everything you read on the internet just because there's a picture with a quote next to it, and it's attributed to Abraham Lincoln. Now, do you think that's right? <laughs> Did the internet exist back then? Of course not. So. Um, as I'd like to begin talking about this, uh, first of all, just thinking about academic and government sources, okay? What you have is an advantage when you get information, especially from land-grant universities like WSU and others, is that we're a source of unbiased, research-based information. We're not in the business of making a profit from selling something. We are, we are to do research to serve the industry. That's why we, why we function. That's why the extension service exists. So it's reliable information. It's, it's replicated. It's, uh, it's something that's peer reviewed. But there's also commercial sources of information. And I, I, I won't disparage any company at this point by saying that you can't trust them because they provide valuable information for, for their customers. Yet, they oftentimes won't sing the praises of a, co a competitor's product if the product is superior to their own. You get the picture, right? So just bear in mind that if it's a company that's selling a product, their information is biased. It doesn't mean it's wrong, but it will be biased based on their desire to sell their product or the service that they provide. You can get information from public sources, such as Wikipedia. Uh, it doesn't mean it's always completely right, because it may not be an expert that's the one putting the information up on the web. You can get information from your peers. So you just look around this room. You talk to each other. You can be some of the best sources of information uh, to each other, because you have experiences that you can share that relate specifically to where you live. And it's also really important to consider where the information comes from. Is it from Chelan County, or the state of Washington, or the Pacific Northwest, or the United States, or Europe, or South Africa, or Australia? Where did it come from? How applicable will it be to decisions that you're trying to make right here on the ground? So, I think most of you, um, as I look around the room, there are a lot of folks that are older than me, and you consider that there's so many sources of information out there, you feel like you're on overload. And if you've got a smartphone now, and you're figuring out how to use it, and you've got emails coming in, and you've, just, you've got so many sources, you're like, I don't even have time to read half of this stuff. Um, that's why it's important to be selective, and to figure out, well, what's really going to work best for you? So I'm going to talk about a lot of different things. You may choose to use very few of these, but if there's a couple in there that are really good and helpful, then I will have accomplished my task. So one of the things I'm going to speak about in just a moment is something called Google Alerts. And that's a service that you can subscribe to to have information sent to you that's tailor-made to what you're interested in. I'll talk about trade journals, some of which I know that you read and others that you may not know about. Uh, technical journals university websites. Uh, we've already heard a presentation about uh, the DAS system at WSU, and you're, most of you are familiar with the AgWeatherNet. There are government websites that are also helpful, private company websites, um, online newsletters that you can subscribe to where information will come directly to you. Uh, email lists where you can get subscriptions for email. There are apps and tools for your smartphones. You can go online and you can watch seminars that can educate you, uh, watching YouTube videos, for example. And uh, I'm going to talk about a website that we're developing uh, that will be basically a one-stop shop, tree fruit website, 
for uh, growers in Washington. So I wanted to talk for a minute about Google Alerts. Everyone has heard the term Google, right? You didn't, uh, the, the phraseology now is Google it. That means go on Google and try and find what you're looking for. Well, Google Alerts is a tool that Google provides that will allow you to receive emails when new results show up on the internet based on some keyword criteria that you select. So you go to the Google website and they have a section of the website called Alerts. And you create an alert. So let's say you wanted an alert that was about apples and fire blight. And you put those keywords in and every time there's a new uh, piece of information on the internet that has to do with apples and fire blight, you'll get an email. You choose your options, how often you want to receive the messages, um, the sources where that messages, those messages come from, what language you want it in, uh, what region of the world that it's coming from, and whether you want all results or you want to tailor make it for some specific ones that you're interested in. And you choose the email address that you have it delivered to. This is really cool. So for example, I set up a Google Alert just for the purpose of this presentation on Apple and Fireblight, and you just go in and you choose these different criteria, you plug in your email address, and then you're, you're in, so to speak. So this is an example of an, e an email Google alert that I got on January the 4th. It comes to me as an email. It says Google alert, Apple Fireblight. It has a link to the story or the information in the email, and then you just click on that link, and it will take you there and you can see if that's something that you really want to read. And this is a story from a newspaper in Iowa talking about how to manage your apple trees in dormant pruning season so that you can minimize the impact of fire blight on your trees. Well, this may or may not be of interest to you. If it's not, you can just delete it. You don't have to even read it if you don't want to, but there may be something there that's quite helpful. And uh, here's another example. This is actually for a scientific journal article. So I realize that in the apple community, um, <clears throat> in the state of Washington, there are people who are growers or who, who are managers who, who have high-level degrees and who like to read science and science-based information from publications. So this one comes to you and it talks about control of fire blight um, using trunk injection of different chemicals. And so you could go on, click on the link, and there's the paper. You could read the abstract and say, oh, this is too heavy-duty science, I really can't understand it, and you just forget about it. Or you may read in there and see that, well, actually, this study that's going on at Michigan State is pretty interesting, and I want to learn more, and you read more of the article. So it's totally up to you. In terms of trade journals, obviously the good fruit grower is, is the one that most of you all read. That's what I would consider to be the gold standard. Uh, very high quality publication that's available in print. You, you probably all get it. Uh, you may or may not be aware that they also have a website with almost all the resources that are in the magazine plus educational videos and other types of information that you can go to. Um, there's the American Fruit Grower or the Western Fruit Grower magazine, which is also uh, quite popular. I've actually been writing an educational column for the uh, American Fruit Grower for 11 years now. And so I have a column that comes out there four or five times a year. And they too have a website with lots of resources, which includes not only articles, but interviews, videos, and, and other things. There's the Fruit Grower News, which is typically targeting more of a Midwest audience, but there, there are always stories in there that have some relevance to the Pacific Northwest. So they have a print publication, and they, they too have a website where these resources are, are also presented. And then there's a publication from Europe. And you may not be aware of this one, but it's really good. It's in English. Uh, it talks about the trends and research that's going on in Europe as it relates to fruit. Um, the only drawback is it's expensive. It's about 220 a year for a subscription. But if you want to be informed of the cutting edge of what's going on in Europe in terms of mechanization and new technologies from a European perspective, it's a very nice publication that's written for the grower. And they too have a website. Of course, if you're a member of IFTA, you get their compact fruit tree that has <coughs> research-based articles that are published in that on a regular basis. And they too have a website. And then if you're really interested more in the science, there are scientific journals that you can access on the web, such as Acta, Horti Acta Horticultura, which is the publication for the International Society for Horticultural Science. 
And then there's one called the Journal of the American Pomological Society, which focuses on, on fruit. And both of these have abstracts of the research that you can read that are not ultra technical. And then if you decide you want to read the full article, you can. So for example, if you went on one of those and you looked for uh, the papers that are there, this is a paper on Honeycrisp uh, Leaf Nutrition by Jerry Nielsen. You can read the abstract. And if you want the, to receive the publication, you can download it, but there is a fee. So um, that's probably only if you're really keenly interested in something would you actually pay $23 to download it. But it's available. There are other journals like Hort Technology, uh, Hort Science. These are where scientists like myself, we publish our results. And um, they, have, they have some very uh, practical research that is designed to answer questions of the industry. Uh, Uta already spoke this morning about uh, Tree Fruit DAS, which is a, a, a service that's available through Washington State University where there are lots of tools and resources that are online uh, to serve the industry in Washington. And of course you're familiar probably with the Ag WeatherNet site, where not only can you get weather-based information, but they also have tools there uh, to provide information about uh, everything from frost alerts to cold hardiness of, of trees and uh, various other uh, additional tools that they're developing in the future. And then there are, <clears throat> excuse me, there are other universities that have very good websites. So it would be foolish for us to only look at sources of information that come from the state of Washington. If there are, if, if for example, there's information at another site that is, also, that is good and we don't currently have those resources available. So um, the University of California at Davis, Oregon State, Cornell, Michigan State, Clemson, they all have very good websites that are targeted to the tree fruit audience where you can get information. The, the thing with, to bear in mind is if it's a specific recommendation about a cultivar, for example, or a rootstock, those are probably based on performance in that geographic region. So just realize that if a particular cultivar performs really well in South Carolina or in California, it may perform differently in, in the state of Washington. So you have to bear those uh, geographic issues in mind. There's a, a national organization called eExtension. You can go online there and get information. They're, they have a whole section devoted to apples um, at eExtension. And then there are lots of government websites, more than you'll ever want to go to in your life. But Let's say you're interested in the Food Safety Modernization Act uh, and concerns about the safety of your food, the safety of the fruit that you're producing, and the regulations that may impinge upon your ability to get fruit to the market. You can go to the Food, uh, food and Drug Administration website and you can sign up for alerts and newsletters, more than you'll ever want, but there may be some there that are highly relevant to you. So for example, I went on and I signed up to a couple of these alerts. This one on the right-hand side of the screen <clears throat> relates to the Food Safety Modernization Act. And whenever there's a new uh, news alert or, or some type of information that's highly relevant or a press release, you'll get an email and it'll have a link to that. And you can go on and read it or not if you prefer. And this one has to do with uh, a draft environmental impact statement on the proposed produce safety rule questions and answers with Annette McCarthy. Okay, So you don't have to go and try and figure out where all this stuff is. You can choose to select the key things you want and it'll automatically get sent to you. Whether you have time to read it or not will be the, uh, the, uh, the real factor. Of course, companies have websites. So this is just, I just chose an example. This is AgriFresh and there's a lot of resources on their website. So you can get information from them in addition to information from uh, the universities. There are these, there are what are called online electronic newsletters that you can subscribe to. <clears throat> Excuse me, there's one here on the left called Fresh Plaza. The one on the right is for the packer. And these have to do with the produce industry and what's going on around the world. And so these newsletters will come out perhaps on a weekly basis and they'll have links to key articles that relate to things that are happening in the world of produce. Some of these may interest you. Um, you know, did you all know that Target is no longer going to be in Canada, for example? That's just uh, the top one on the, on the packer. So these are, uh, you can subscribe to these and they, they will come to you on a regular basis. Of course, the, the magazines, the trade journals that you all read, you can subscribe to them for electronic alerts to various things that they are uh, sending out on a regular basis, whether it's uh, American Western Fruit Grower, like on the left, 
or if it's a good fruit grower on the right, and they will send you alerts when they have new content. So you get the, get the news perhaps even before it's in print. The fruit grower news on the left is another one that I talked about already. And then WSU has um, an email alert system through the irrigated ag section of extension. And whenever there's new meetings or new resources that WSU has created, those will come out to you as an email on a weekly basis. So you can be up to date on what's going on. Many of you are perhaps using smartphones now and you know that there are apps that you can uh, download to your phone to help you in making decisions. And uh, this is just an example, it's not an endorsement, but if you're trying to figure out the proportions of different products that you want to put in the mix tank and how to, how to calculate that, there's an app to do that now. There are apps that um, you can use from your smartphone to monitor pest populations and traps that are scattered throughout your orchard. And you can actually, from the smartphone or from your computer in your office, uh, determine what kind of pest populations you have based on trap counts from this company called Semios. This is pretty cool stuff. Back when I was in college, I was an IPM scout, and I scouted orchards in a couple different counties in southern Ontario. And boy, I never would have even dreamed that some kind of technology would be like would available like this now, but it is. And it's, uh, it's, it's very interesting and very powerful. If you want to educate yourself, you can go online and you can watch seminars where uh, researchers or extension people share about a particular topic. So are you concerned about spotted wing drosophila? Are you growing organic sweet cherries? Well, you can go online and watch uh, this particular presentation. Right now at WSU, <clears throat> we are creating a lot of educational videos specifically with a grower in mind so that they can go online and watch, watch these videos at their own schedule to educate themselves about things that will help them in their operations. So for example, on the left, uh, there's a, a video we have about soil testing by Dr. Joan Davenport. On the right is a video that we created with Kate Evans, our apple breeder, and she's talking about the, the things that they do in their breeding program to help ensure that we have very, that they select for very high quality fruit. And at the Hort Show in Kennewick in December, we had an entire program devoted to talking about roots and all the different factors that affect root growth and development and tree survival in orchards. And all those presentations have been recorded and they're available now on, on YouTube for you to go online and watch if you were unable to participate in the meeting or if you want to go back and review something. And I have a videographer gentleman in the back here standing, he's uh, taping some of these programs today, Steve Foreman, and he's helping us to get this done. A uh, very talented young man, uh, really good videographer, and we're, we've recorded a video this past fall with Stefan Umazaki out in the pear orchard. We're, we're working on a video right now to instruct about pr pruning Bartlett pears. And uh, we'll hopefully have that video done this spring. The last thing that I'm going to talk about um, is the creation of a new website. And I think most of you will agree that if you're trying to find information on tree fruits from Washington State University, there are a lot of different places you can go to to get information, and they're not all in the same place. They're not all, uh, it's not all easily found. And they're counting it, there's information in county sites, there's information at sites that are associated with the research and extension centers or with the academic departments. Um, and there's so many different places that you can get information, it's hard to know even where you are when you find it. And so one of the goals that I had in coming to WSU was to create a one-stop shop, uh, a WSU website where you could go and find, if not everything, most everything that you'd want. And um, not to have a hundred cl clicks to try and find where it is. So we started this project. Um, last spring, and I'm going to share some details about that right now. So this is what the home page is going to look like. We, we, we have not made the site live yet because we're still finishing the work, but this is what it's going to look like. And so you can see on the left hand side, um, there's the main categories that you'll be looking for. There's a, a search box on the top right hand side. The, the entire site will be searchable. There's going to be a section that's devoted to educational videos, a section to research reports, there'll be information about news, we'll have links to important sites, we're going to have a calendar, and all these different features will be present and usable and to help you get the information you're looking for quickly. 
We're going to, or I should go back here, I'm sorry. At the bottom, there's an apple, you can see a pear, a cherry, and a peach. And when, when you go to the website, if you choose, if you click on the apple, what it's going to do is it's going to load a page that's going to be filtered specifically to have apple only information. Or the same with pear, or the same with sweet cherry. Okay, because because there's so much information, that helps to narrow it down so you'll find specifically what you're looking for. So this is what an app, the Apple landing page will look like, although if you look at some of the text, you'll see, if you can read the fine print, you'll notice the words are in Latin. Don't worry about that. It's not going to be in Latin. This is just filler text to, to hold the place so that we'll know how to do formatting. But we're in the process of filling that all in with, obviously, with English. Um, but you'll have uh, categories that you can choose from that are relevant to Apple. There'll be information at the bottom where you can choose uh, more in-depth research, reports, videos, and so on. And one of the things that we found when we talked with different people about what they were looking for in a website was the ability to, to search and to be able to find information quickly based on keywords that they were interested in. So we have built a search engine within this site. And the search engine is designed in such a way that you can choose the keywords that you want. For example, uh, coddling moth. And so you can see in the middle of the page, there's, this, there's a tab that says WSU, there's one that says other universities, one that says trade articles, one that says, uh, it refers to Washington Tree Fruit Research Commission final reports, and then technical articles. And so you choose your keywords, and then from any of those tabs, you, you click on what you want, and it will automatically populate that, via, that, that window with the results that meet, meet that criteria. So for example, if we chose WSU, it shows these, and this is just the top half of the page. There's a lot of resources below that. But these are coddling moth resources just come, that have just come from WSU. Um, if you go to other universities, it's pulling from uh, Cornell, or it's pull, pulling from UC Davis, or Penn State, or whatever. If it's from trade articles, you can see here, one the top one is from the Fruit Grower News. The next one is from the Good Fruit Grower. If it's commission reports, those will come up based on what have been submitted to the commission and are on, in an online database, uh, final project reports, and then also technical articles. The, the, these are coming from the journals that we've pre-selected that we know have good content related to tree fruit that would be interesting to the industry here. So these, this is all in development right now, but we're testing it and making sure it's all working properly and working out the bugs. We're also at the place now where we're building content. So this is a content page. This is in the orchard management section talking about pollination. And this is information specifically about honeybees. So we're, we're building the site. We're putting in content. And um, it'll be online and accessible here in, hopefully in the near future. And this is just some information about WSU breeding, the apple breeding and cherry breeding program. And as you can see, maybe you can see, up at the top there's a little apple symbol and then there's a, a pear and a cherry and a, eventually a peach. Where we have content on these other commodities, you could just click on that little button up there to go to see what, it, what, what was available about cherry or pear or whatever. It automatically will take you there. That's just to help you navigate more easily. Uh, we have a large team that's a part of this project, folks on campus, at our center in Wenatchee, and down at Prosser, and um, it wouldn't be possible to do this without a lot of help of some very talented people. So, I guess that's um, what I wanted to share with you all this morning. If there's time for a few questions, I'd be happy to, to answer any. Yes, sir? You will know, are you, do you get the Good Fruit Grower? Yes, yes you'll know it'll, it'll be advertised through the Good Fruit Grower. It'll also be communicated through the uh, Western Fruit Grower and through the irrigated ag listserv that WSU has. We're gonna, um, the Palm Club, the uh, North Central Washington Fieldman's Association, I will get the word out, I assure you. And it will be sometime in the next few months. But just so that you all know, the people that are working on this are all, this is all a part-time project for them. They all have other jobs. And so it's kind of like pulling teeth to get all the final things done, but we're making very good progress. And I think it'll be an exciting resource that you all will use and appreciate. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you very much.